Hey, this is Notzer, and we're going to be taking a look at Tier 10 Ranked Recommendations, just like my Tier 8, Strengths, Weaknesses, and Outstanding Ships. First up, we've got the Shimakaze. Recently buffed, best-in-class concealment, however, guns give up in a 1v1, and its torpedoes are seen from a mile away, so you're going to be more reliant on initial objective capture and body spotting. Try to limit the amount of time you're in your own smoke, because Anytime you're in your own smoke, you're not spotting for your team. You want to try and get on the flanks and spot those cruisers that are camping, those, those battleships that are camping, and perhaps run into an enemy DD and always have better concealment than them. Be very, very careful of radar, though. But she's got the concealment to be really annoying for ships that do not want to be seen. The gearing. The gearing is my go-to for tier 10 competitive. I, I love the gearing. It's great in the 1v1 against an enemy DD. Really brutally honest, it's gonna just bully the crap out of an enemy DD. Takes the objective, has useful torpedoes. If there's a lot of aircraft carriers in the queue, it has defensive fire to defend itself. It's really good. The Kobodovsk. Kobodovsk is the tier 10 mainline Soviet destroyer and it's really bad for ranked. It doesn't have the torpedo range to really effectively contest the objective. It doesn't have the concealment to contest the objective. It has to be able to get into a position of power without being seen, and that's really hard for it. However, it is really fast, so you can initially rush to an objective if it is on a, a uh, map that has a hard point, an island in the objective, you could hide behind it and use that as cover, and maybe you could go with smoke bill. Get into the objective, you are there. Until the enemy has radar, I can push you out of it. Maybe you could get a capture before the enemy gets in range. But honestly, it's not very good for ranked. It's just outspotted by pretty much everything else. The Grozovoy. The Grozovoy is the better of the two Soviet destroyers, in my opinion. Better concealment. It has the ability to equip defensive fire if there's an aircraft carrier heavy Q. Not the case in North America, but maybe your region has more of them. It has torpedoes that are usable, has guns that are usable. It really only suffers from being sluggish. You can't stay where torpedoes might come all too often. You're just going to have a really tough time maneuvering away from that. And that's why this is dropped, in my opinion. I don't know if it's worse than the Shima, but it, it, it's better than the Kobrovsk. But it, it, it's not much worse or much better than the Shima. They're, they're very close in their effectiveness for the team. The Z-52. This one is very good. This is my number one. I really enjoy the Germans. I really enjoy the Americans. The reason I would pick this over the gearing, though, is it can test the objective so much harder by having Hydro. You can see all the torpedoes that are inevitably going to be coming. It has the German Hydro Acoustic, so it does outspot its concealment, or it's right on the edge of spotting it, outspotting its concealment. Stay in smoke, use your Hydro, kill the target, see the torpedoes, never take them, fast torpedo rearm. It's great. It's outstanding. I love this ship. The Yue Yang. The Yue Yang is... The most re recent destroyer, and it's Pan-Asian, so it has the Deepwater Torpedo, and it also has access to radar, interestingly. Now, I have tried both the radar and the smoke, and I felt like smoke, honestly, is not very useful in ranked play, because there is so much radar, so many cruisers, so many destroyers with torpedoes, smoke is really... It's sort of a homing beacon for enemies to attack. So I honestly like the radar build a little bit more for ranked, and that's pretty cool. You can be in a position where you are going to outspot most of your competition other than the Shima, and if you need to, you can use radar for your team. They'll focus the fire, the target down with fire, and you can have success. Unfortunately, you can't contribute with your torpedoes because the enemy DDs are immune to it. But if you get lucky and there's a cruiser or a battleship that isn't paying attention, you can punish them. Very hard to det detect, but more often than not, players are ready for that stuff, so just be aware. This is definitely better than the Kobrovsk, 
the Grozovoi and the Shima, in my opinion, but it's it's not better than the Gearing or the Z-52. The Zhao. The Zhao was a surprise for me. I actually found a lot of success in it, and the reason is because of its gun velocity and its HE. I was able to stay near max range and just continue to wallop the enemy DDs, uh, enemy DDs, enemy battleships and cruisers. On the DD subject, it has great gun velocity that you can engage DDs and take them out at a reasonable range. It just doesn't have a radar tool to dislodge someone. It requires you sort of go around the enemy flank and you will be isolated in a way you can't contribute to your team that much it's a little bit more selfish than most of the cruisers but it can be highly effective in the right hands the des moines the des moines is an outstanding cruiser it's got radar it's got high rate of fire it's got a tanky bow it's got great a protection if it's a heavy aircraft carrier this is this is the go-to this is great this helps the team so much. You will run into this guy constantly sitting on the corner of an island, camping, firing on you, using radar. You need to disengage and then come back again. Definitely an outstanding cruiser for competitive. The Muskva. The Muskva is useful for competitive. Maybe not so much. What the heck is that on the screen? Um, it's useful for competitive. It's got radar. It's a little bit more bulky, though, so it's a little bit easier for the enemy to hit. Torpedoes, HEAP, and its gun velocity will not allow you to camp much behind islands. You will have to get away from the islands, and if you're away from the islands, the enemy can hit you. So it's, it's solid, but I don't think it's better than the Des Moines, and honestly, I think the Zhao is a better tool for ranked because of who you're going up against. We've got the Hindenburg. The Hindenburg is very nice. It's got the Inertia Fuse High Explosive built into its HE, so it does a lot of damage to battleships, cruisers, and destroyers. Obviously, it has torpedoes. It has hydroacoustic, German hydroacoustic. Very, very nimble. It has good range. I really enjoyed it. The only problem is it doesn't have that radar. It doesn't have that tool that really converts a kill. It can protect you from torpedoes, and maybe if you can get close. However, that's not going to happen that often. So, it, it's super solid. I think it's a little bit better than the Muskva. It's probably right there with the Zhao. This and the Zhao were very effective. Honestly, I think this ship is better for the team. The Zhao is more selfish. Next up, we've got the Minotaur. The Minotaur is a great ship. I found a lot of success with a radar build. I know that is sort of a glass cannon, but if you can see a target and kill them, that is worth the health that you can trade. Obviously, you have the British heal, so you can take damage and heal it back up. It's good. If you can get a DD kill with your radar, and they don't expect it as often because most players use smoke, I am seeing a lot of radar in competitive, though. But once you use your radar, the person's like, oh crap, a light cruiser with radar, I gotta run! And then they're dead already, because you could kill them so quick. I really enjoyed this ship. Plus it has torpedoes, it's nice. The Henri, or the Henry IV, it's uh, interesting. Probably not going to see a lot of these, but I found success similar to the Zhao. If I stayed near my max range and I harassed the Des Moines, the Minotaurs, they had a really tough time trying to hit my ship. Same with battleships, if I stay near my max range. Now, because of that, you're a little bit more selfish. You can't really stay close to help your team contest an objective. But if you've got escort and you can get on the flank, you can do a lot of damage, which I did with a friendly destroyer. Yamato. Yamato is, you know, the biggest battleship. 460 millimeter guns surprisingly effective honestly now the reason i think this is surprisingly effective is because of its gun range and its accuracy with its guns i was able to stay in between two objectives and go after targets that were seemingly stationary because they were trying to camp around the island and if you got an angle you really punish them hard there is a lot of overpen with this though 
and that m suffers. That makes it suffer a lot in competitive, in my opinion. Plus, it doesn't have any AA protection, so this will be a first target for enemy aircraft carriers if they are in your queue. I didn't have to deal with it, but if they're in the queue, this is not a ship you want to pull. The Montana. Quite the opposite. This is a ship you want to pull if there's a lot of aircraft carriers in the queue. It's the best in class AA protection. It's got 12 406 millimeter guns. Good turret traverse so it can engage those DDs that are trying to get in and harass you. Much better than Yamato, of course. I found a lot of success with this too. It's the go-to. It's the it's probably the 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 easiest to play, the most prevalent in competitive, and I think there's a reason for that. It, it just works. The Grosso Kua first. Now this is a love of mine, but she definitely is bigger. She draws a lot of fire, a lot of torpedoes. The enemy will absolutely key off on you. But my secondary concealment build was pretty outstanding. I was able to mitigate a ton of incoming shells. My teammates could fire on these targets that were openly firing. And I was able to survive the onslaught. Also, hydroacoustic is nice when you know there is a potential threat of torpedoes. The Conqueror. Probably the most controversial ship at tier 10. It's an HE fire spammer, but there are so many cruisers and destroyers in the queue. Honestly, that's kind of a, a weakness. It can't one-shot those cruisers. It's got a load AP, and then it gives up its super broken, you know, HE shell where it can do tons of damage. So it, it's okay. It's got great concealment, of course, but it's definitely not the first battleship pick, I think. And it takes a lot of damage from those same cruisers and destroyers because it, it just has a lot of soft armor. So it will take a lot of HE damage and it will be on fire a lot. So I think it's it's better than probably the Grosokua first, if I'm gonna be completely honest. But it's not better than the Montana. I think the Montana is just a better ship overall for what you will see predominantly a handful of enemy uh, cruisers. A little bit more deck armor, so that, that's nice, that's nice. Plus, I, I kind of feel like the AA protection's, you know, really nice. We've got the Republic, or Republic. It is the new French battleship. Probably not going to see a lot of these unless, you know, people were really successful and progressing. It is really good. Very accurate at killing cruisers. Very accurate, very scary cruisers. Be very careful because it has a high rate of fire. It has speed boost to get in position. It suffers from having to show a little bit too much side sometimes to enemy battleships, but there's just not a lot of battleships in the queue. And because of that, it's pretty awesome. It does have a lot of soft armor though, so it will take a lot of HE damage, just like the Conqueror. However, that's okay. You're going to be doing a better job at killing those cruisers than the Conqueror ever could be. And it shows. I think a lot of players are pleasantly surprised by how effective this is. I have a secondary build. Actually, I don't have any any build. Yeah, I have a concealment build. I don't have a commander that's very skilled. You will probably run into the French battleship and the Pan-Asian destroyer as not having the most skilled commander because they're sort of a recent addition. So that might make you not want to pick the ship, but it, it can definitely be outstanding if it has a skilled commander and you have played it. There's a lot of cruisers in the queue. A lot of cruisers in the queue. For the Japanese aircraft carrier, Hakuru, it's uh, very good, obviously. Incredibly good. And the one aspect that makes it outstanding is that it has so many squadrons. It keeps everything spotted and it has the one-shot potential. This is definitely the top aircraft carrier, in my opinion. Especially since they nerfed the Midway's loadout. The Midway previously could just throw aircraft at the problem. Now they're very close on the amount of aircraft they carry. And the extra squadrons allow you to keep enemies spotted longer so your teammates can fire on them for an extended period of time. The Midway. The Midway, what you see is what you're going to get. It's got a loadout with six squadrons, which is already less than the Japanese, but they're super effective squadrons. It's really down to how you play your aircraft carrier 
which decides who wins. And that is more important than any other type in this game. If you are good at the aircraft carrier, play the aircraft carrier because you can basically guarantee a victory for your team. If you're not very good at it, probably don't play an aircraft carrier because it's so important that you are good for your team. My outstanding picks for ranked season, gearing, Z-52 for destroyers. I really like the Z-52. I just, there's something about it that is just so intoxicating. I love the fast torpedoes. I love the AP shells. I love the hydro. I love that stuff. For cruisers, I'm going to go with the Des Moines and the Minotaur. I feel like radar is so important. The Minotaur is terrifying to the amount of destroyers in the queue. And of course, the Des Moines, very tanky. It can set up on an island, control the objective, help your team convert two or three kills. Plus, it has the added bonus of having easy AA protection where no aircraft carriers are going to want to have to go after you. For battleships, I'm going to go with the Montana. And honestly, the Republic. I was really pleasantly surprised by this. I had a game where I mitigated 3.5 million damage and did 130 or 140,000 damage. I did not expect that with a commander that, that, that week. But these two ships were outstanding. Very effective. I will say, though... If you don't have aircraft carriers in your queue, it really doesn't matter what battleship you pull, as long as you can kill cruisers. If you could kill the cruisers and play smart, it doesn't matter. You're not really bringing tools that convert kills. You know, you don't have radar, you don't have hydroacoustics that you're going to be using at close range. Gross of Kuo first, it's more of a defensive measure. You really need to hit your shots, and whatever ship you like that allows you to hit your shots, you take it. For the aircraft carrier, it, you gotta go Japanese. The amount of squadrons is just so powerful for scouting. Keeping targets spotted allows teammates to kill. People are more accurate and ranked, so you're gonna have to deal with that. The midway isn't weak, I just think that scouting your, the enemy team is more important than anything else you could do. And this has an edge, a very noticeable edge. And that is tier 10 ranked recommendations. I think that everyone should find success as long as they play to the strengths and weaknesses of their ship. I know that tier 10 has a little bit limited number of ships that you can choose from. Some of you don't even have tier 10s or you only have one or two. So don't be discouraged that your ship was, you know, bottom of the barrel as far as my opinion. Just play to the strengths that are offered to you. If you are really good at brawling, you want to brawl. You want to brawl. If you're really good at radaring ships and firing over islands, you want to fire over islands. And if you're really good at killing enemies at long range, you want to kill them at long range. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you next time.